Hi there. I've been asked to give a description of my approach to the management of superficial femoral artery disease. In order to understand peripheral arterial disease and specifically the disease of the superficial femoral artery, it's as always essential to understand the anatomy. The superficial femoral artery is one of the branches of the common femoral artery, the other branch being the deep femoral artery. The superficial femoral artery runs anterior and then medial to the femur and then makes a turn towards the posterior aspect when it changes to the popliteal artery behind the knee. The artery changes into the popliteal artery as it passes through the adductor hiatus. Very commonly, disease occurs in this distal aspect of the superficial femoral artery, especially in patients with a long-standing history of smoking. Some of the indications to consider intervention in patients with peripheral arterial disease, and specifically in patients with superficial femoral artery disease, would be severely limiting claudication, which is considered a relative indication, rest pain of the toes or the foot, ulceration of the toes, foot or leg that does not respond to conservative management, and gangrene of the toes or the foot. The last three mentioned here are absolute indications for intervention where limiting claudication is considered a relative indication. So if we have an indication for intervention, my approach would always be endovascular first, and that would involve doing a peripheral arteriogram. My approach, as far as peripheral arteriogram is concerned, is usually through the contralateral femoral artery to assess the flow through the aorta into the iliac vessels, onto the common femoral artery, and then into the superficial femoral artery to exclude more proximal disease. If we have established that the patient does have superficial femoral artery disease, I follow the following approach. If the patient has evidence of a stenosis of the superficial femoral artery, I would always do a plain old balloon angioplasty. The plain old balloon angioplasty would then indicate whether the patient had a good radiological outcome. In the event that there's a good radiological outcome, my first choice would be a drug-coated or drug-eluting balloon. In the event that the plain old balloon angioplasty, which is just a standard balloon angioplasty, in demonstrated a poor radiological outcome in spite of my best efforts to have a good outcome, that would be an indication for a drug-coated or drug-eluting stent. If the superficial femoral artery disease found during the peripheral arteriogram indicated that the patient had a superficial femoral artery occlusion, the situation changes significantly because a more aggressive approach is often required. If I am able to pass a guide wire through this complete occlusion of the superficial femoral artery, I would always address the situation with a, a plain old balloon angioplasty, but I would always have a very low threshold to continue with a drug-coated or drug-eluting stent thereafter. Just placing a drug-coated balloon in the context of a vessel that was completely occluded or where there's a poor radiological outcome after the balloon angioplasty does not make sense. If the patient with a complete superficial femoral artery occlusion, I am unable to pass a guide wire, this would obviously be an indication for surgery. So this is my summary with regards to how I would approach patients with disease of the superficial femoral artery. I would always think in terms of new intimal hyperplasia as being the major threat for reocclusion of this patient's superficial femoral artery and would have a very low threshold to make use of a drug-coated balloon 
or a drug-coated stent um, within the context of disease of the superficial femoral artery. Thank you very much for your attention.